In the problem given, a stone is thrown horizontally at a speed of 5 meters per second from the top of a cliff that is 78.4 meters high. First thing I like to do is draw a bit of a picture. What we know is we have a stone going 5 meters per second horizontally that goes off the edge of a cliff 78.4 meters high and eventually lands. How long does it take to reach the bottom of the cliff? Well, to solve that problem, remember that horizontal and vertical motion are completely independent. We don't need to know a thing about the horizontal motion in order to solve this for the vertical motion. Let's look at just the vertical motion, because that will tell us how long it's in the air. The vertical direction, vi equals zero. We don't know vf. We know the distance traveled, assuming we call down the positive direction, is 78.4 meters. We know acceleration is 9.81 meters per second squared, and time is what we're solving for. Now, which kinematic equation can we use? A good one to start with might be d equals vit plus one-half at squared. In this case, vi is going to make that term go to zero, so we now have d equals one-half at squared, or t squared must equal 2d over a, or 2 times 78.4 meters over 9.81 meters per second squared, which when I do that gives me something right around 16 seconds squared. So t squared equals 16 seconds squared. If I take the square root of both sides, I find out that t must be 4 seconds. How long it takes to reach the bottom of the cliff? 4 seconds. Notice that we didn't need to use at all that 5 meters per second horizontally. Now in part b, it asks us how far from the base of the cliff does the stone hit the ground? Well, now we have our table for horizontal motion. vi we know is 5 meters per second. vf dat a in the horizontal direction is zero. There's nothing pushing or pulling our stone forward or backwards. And if acceleration is zero and it's the change in velocity, then vi and vf must be the same. They must both be five meters per second. We also know the stone is in the air for four seconds from the horizontal, from the vertical, excuse me, part of the problem. So all we need to find now is d for the horizontal direction. We can use d equals vi t plus one half a t squared, this time using our values for horizontal motion. And we realize now that if a equals zero, this term goes to zero, therefore d equals vi t, which is really the same as our average velocity equals d over t equation. Exact same thing when acceleration is zero. Therefore d must equal five meters per second times four seconds our time or 20 meters. Finally, for part C, it asks us what are the horizontal and vertical components of the stone's velocity just before it hits the ground? Well, in the horizontal direction, we already know that, in the, that the velocity is 5 meters per second, so we can write Vx, where the x direction is 5 meters per second. Final velocity in the y direction, though, we haven't figured out yet. Vf vertically to do that, though, we can use vf equals vi plus at, which is going to be equal to 9.81 meters per second squared, times 4 seconds, or right around 39.2 meters per second. So v in the vertical direction is 39.2 meters per second. Putting that all together, what we have is a component of velocity that's horizontal of 5 meters per second. We have a vertical component of 39.2 meters per second. So although the problem doesn't ask us this, if it did, we could find out what the total velocity of the stone is right before it hits the ground by adding our two vectors. Remember to add vectors, we go from the starting point of the first to the ending point of the last to get our resultant. And we can figure out the length of this vector, the purple vector, by using the Pythagorean theorem. a squared plus b squared equals the hypotenuse squared. So hypotenuse squared must equal, pardon me, hypotenuse squared must be 5 meters per second squared 
plus 39.2 meters per second squared. And if I want the square root of the hypotenuse squared, I take the square root of that, plug that all into my calculator, and I get that the hypotenuse, or V total, is going to be equal to 39.5 meters per second. Not asked for in the problem, but a good thing to know nonetheless.